to the Cody's Bourbon & Cola D1NZ National Drifting Championship. It's round one from Manfield Raceway in Fielding. Presented to you by Cody's Bourbon & Cola and in association with Castro Edge Oil, BP Ultimate and Dodson Performance. Welcome to the Cody's Bourbon & Cola D1NZ National Drifting Championship from Mighty Manfield. We're here for round one of six where we'll finish at Pukekohe Raceway for the grand final. But right now, for one of the fastest drifting corners in the championship, it's Manfield. Kurt Whitaker took out the championship last year. Man, Mike Whitty just missed it. Who is going to win? Bragging rights is up. What do you girls think who's going to take it out? Cam Vernon, Kurt Whitaker, Cole Armstrong, Mad Mike. So a bit of selection there. Now the weather's turned it on, the track conditions, while well, that heat gets in the track, it makes those tyres a lot stickier, which is good for the drifters. Definitely no rain here today. Now let's check it out. So as over 5,000 fans get ready to rumble for the first round, who's going to be victorious? They're about to find out. Let's check out what drifting's all about. Unlike any other motorsport, drifting is a judge sport. Now, for you at home, you may be wondering, what is drifting and how do you judge it? Speed, angle and style. So, obviously, the speed and line are, are quite important. So, that, that's where they place the car on the track. We have things called clipping points, which are where the drivers aim to place the car in certain points on the track. And these are very important for the drivers. Make sure they hit these things. That's how they score maximum points. What happens when they go into the battles? You've also then add in proximity, how close the chase car, the car behind, can get to the lead car. It's very, very intense at that point. Quite often, they're gonna connect. If they do touch while, while drifting, it's, it's okay as long as the chase car doesn't put the lead car off its drift. That becomes a real big factor of the battle. They have uh, one run each lead and chase. Runners on to the next round process of elimination. Uh, when the car goes off track, so one wheel off is a slight deduction, two wheels off is a zero run. The whole purpose of drifting is to get the car to the edge of control. Okay, so you're right on the limit, and so often cars will spin out. Once again, a zero run. If the car drives straight for too long, a zero run. So they're fighting to keep the car out of control. So it's a very interesting motorsport. So top 32 goes to top 16, to top eight, to top four. Then we find our podium winners. So Warren Sear practice is underway. As we all know, practice leads to qualifying, Brendan, but at this stage in the day, it's all about learning the track, then it's into qualifying, and that determines who you meet in the battles. Hey guys, I'm going to take you through a lap of Manfield Raceway. What we've got here is the first entry point is called a sweeper, and that's a 160k entry in fourth gear. We've got a rear clipping zone there, so what happens is the car is right on the outside, left-hand side of the track. They come around the corner, back to third, switching back really aggressively. I've asked us to stay on an outside line through the first corner. It's quite hard to get to, it's quite a hard line to run. And another right-hand rear clip on this point here. So it's outside, outside, and then to an inside. Apex is corner hard, come through, middle of the track. And you're basically foot flat all the way through the midsection. Switching back really hard and then just slowly scrubbing off speed right-hand side of the track. And then you come into a real technical hairpin at the end there, and, and that's something that you've got to get, and that'll win or lose your battles, guaranteed. Boom. We're done. Defending champion, 1NZ, Kurt Whitaker. It was a wicked season, some close, hard battling. We got to battle with the best of them, and we got to beat them. We built a new motor um, as quick as we could, and we've done whatever we can to really make it as good as possible and, and competitive. You've got to have a good machine under you. So we go from the Whitaker Motorsport 2JZ to the mighty V8. I'm Fanger Dan, I'm from Whangarei, and this is my VZ Commodore. You know, some of these cars here are, you know, well over 400 kilowatts, you know, we're not even, you know, close to 400. Always a threat here at Manfield for V Energy, it's Cole Armstrong. He grabbed the number eight qualifying spot. You're here with Cole Armstrong, I'm the driver of the VR34 Skyline. This year we're looking to um, change a lot of the setup in the car, make it a lot faster, have a lot more traction in the car. That's sort of where drifting's going over the world. But also keep the New Zealand style of the big fat angle, big smoke, and the big flare that we have. Uh, hey, my name's Gaz Wider. This is my new car that we're now running a V8 out of a Chev. Just the cost of running a 600 horsepower four cylinder just got too much for us. Picking up second spot for qualifying with huge angle is Danum Templeman. It's running our same 20B motor and gearbox, but we've reshelled it to get some weight out of the car. 
It's, it's such an enjoyable sport um, that, you know, that's why we're here. I'm Mad Mike, this is the Red Bull Speed Hunters Mad Bull RX-7. Nobody else but Mad Mike would roll straight off the trailer, skip the practice day, grab the number one qualifying spot. Here we are, we've got the Mad Bull, we won here last year with this car. Well, I've been spinning all over the place this morning, just, just too aggressive, the cars are so violent. So just trying to kind of calm down a little, maybe like 80%, just get the feel of things again because this thing's so fast. We've actually swapped the uh, HK sequential gearboxes over, so the Mad Bull RX-7 now runs six speed. With a 4 to no turbo, it doesn't produce much torque, so having the six speed, we need every gear we can get to keep the thing in power band. We've only got like 1,000 RPM to play with, and she's all around here. Fifth qualifier would be the powerhouse from the north, Vangadan Woolhouse. Manfield is the most challenging track for me. Um, I've always done well here, I've always qualified, you know, in the top three and, and finished in the top three a lot of the times, you know, but I've never had that number one spot. To win at a Manfield is very tricky. So the, the main thing is get fast, more angle, and get the whole style right. So with us, we, we're running the real tall differential. Uh, so we run about 190 kilometers in third and 250 in fourth. So we're dialing the speed in pretty quickly. Just be very aggressive. Really, it comes down to me having a clear mind, knowing what I'm doing, and putting the heat on all these rest of these top drivers here. And talking about top drivers, it's V8 supercar legend Shane Van Gisbergen in the Rattler Motorsport Falcon. I'm Shane Van Gisbergen here in the Rattler Motorsport Ford Falcon here at D1NZ round one here at Manfield. We're in a uh, old NZ V8 uh, Ford Falcon, so good to still be in a Ford in a V8. Uh, it's got plenty more lock than my supercar, so uh, enjoying it, doing everything I'm not meant to do. Yeah, there's most probably about um, seven V8s out there now, so um, nah, it's looking good. I keep keep thinking someone's taking off on my car, you know, um, hearing all these V8s and stuff, so nah, it's good, man. Oh, I think they've all seen the light. It's good to follow the good guys and see how they do it and uh, get to their level, so uh, every time I go out, getting better and better. I shouldn't have given him my tips, you know, <laughs> my lines. So. so after qualifying was all set and done, we were ready for the epic battle of the ages. Holden versus Ford, Fanger versus the Giz. But first up, Cam Vernon, Sky Zhao. The battle of the mobile company, Skinny versus Two Degrees, V8 versus RB30. So these are two brand new cars in the pro ranks. Sky Zhao, 350Z, Chev underneath the bonnet. Cam Vernon, last season's pro am champ. You can see they're just making a little bit of a mistake, a little bit of a correction from Vernon. In fact, he throws it all away, and Sky Zhao will go through. So it's the top 32 battle of the V8s. To have you know, Shane here, you know, in my first battle, it's good, you know. Ford and Holden, I can't get away from it. <laughs> yeah, this is what we're here for. This is awesome, eh? So pinned as one of the best battles of the day is Shane Van Gisbergen on the right, Fanger Dad Mulhouse on the left. Now Fanger gets the lead because he qualified higher, Warren. Yeah, so what that means is that Fanger Dan Woolhouse can dictate the terms here. He can set the tone for the battle. And look at Shane Van Gisbergen. He is straight onto the back of the Castrol Edge Commodore. The Rattler Motorsport Falcon does not lack for horsepower, doing everything he can to stick with the 2006 DK. Now, what a competition debut by Shane Van Gisbergen, back bumper of the 2006 New Zealand champion. So what happens now? They swap over. And Van Gisbergen has the advantage. So that means Banger Dan's going to chase down that Rattler Motorsport Falcon as hard as he can. And look at it. Back bumper, 140 kilometres there, hitting into that first apex. You can see both drivers just hard on the throttle there. Shane Van Gisbergen trying to stick to the dictator line. Banger Dan showing his years of experience here, putting the pressure on the V8 supercar pilot. Can Van Gisbergen hold it? He's nice and tight on the inner apex. Banger Dan, though, what a veteran chase there. Puts the pressure on him. Fanger Dan will go through. So if you're a Holden fan, Ford, you lose out this time, but oh my God, Shane Van Gisbergen, what a competition debut. Amazing. And I seen him on my on my um, on on the rear of me, you know, and I was like, oh man, I'm like, you know. So I just oh well, we just, we just put on a good show and um, and do a good chase, you know. That should have been a final. Cody's D1NZ top 16 after the break. And we're back with D1NZ. Founded in 2003, what a history it has. 10 years, a decade of drifting. From the grassroots beginning to the most extreme motorsport in New Zealand today. 10 years of drifting, it's gone from cut springs, lock diffs, to quick change rear ends, sky's the limit. 
10 years of drifting, it seems like a long time, but um, I'm still having fun. I still get the buzz every time I skid a corner, so been there from pretty much the start of New Zealand drifting, so I'm glad to still be one of the originals. You know, it went from when we first started we were watching drifting, and so the general perception is a car with a lot of horsepower and no grip. Where us professional drivers want as much grip as possible. We want to be able to go as fast as we can. We want that adrenaline. We want to be able to throw the car harder, faster, have more angle, more control. It's amazing 10 years of drifting in New Zealand. I've been involved for probably six of that. And even before that, I was really into it. It's come a long way. Driver skill and the level of cars is amazing. You know, this is probably one of the biggest fields we've had at D1NZ. I've been in drifting for five, six years now. Going to USA and seeing the development in the cars every year. And it's awesome to come back here in New Zealand and we're exactly the same thing, you know, everyone learns so much. And this year is, um, is blowing me away. The level of the cars is um, unbelievable. Overseas they have massive budgets, New Zealand we don't. Us Kiwis, we get the cars to work just as well, or if not better than some of the overseas cars. I'll be the old bugger of the lot, you know, so um, yeah, no, it's good, eh? I love the sport, I want to see it grow, and that's why I'm staying around, you know. Take it to the next level, you know, and, and, and get the younger guys into it. So into the top 16 we go, and first up we've got a massive clash of the heavyweights. Cole Armstrong and Gaz Wider, battle of the S14s, Brad Lauder and Carl Wooderman. Andrew Redwood head to head with Kurt Whitaker, and how will Sky Zow go? Oh yeah, I'm up against the three time King New Zealand champ Gaz Wider. We're going to go out and give him some heat I think. So here we go into the battle, we go in Cole Armstrong with a massive clutch kick to get his drift underway. Gaz White is on the chase, makes a mistake, there's a bit of a correction there from Gaz White. was looking good up until then, switches back over, he's got to try and recover this. He's getting used to a new V8, a new power plant and he dives back in on the VNGR34. But is it going to be enough? The judges score an advantage to Cole Armstrong. We swap over. Cole Armstrong, pretty ecstatic on that run. So we'll take one more look at that big dive from Wider, but he knows he's made the mistake and handed the advantage to Cole. It comes down to the lead for Gaz Wider. Will he be pushed through to the top eight? Can he force a mistake from Cole Armstrong as they come into the initiation? Big handbrake there through the first apex. Gaz Wider mashing the throttle, trying to extract maximum horsepower from the V8. A slight mistake there from Cole Armstrong, but the judges are going to still call the advantage to him, and Cole Armstrong will go through to top eight. So we'll go to the replay and take a look at this one more time. Cole Armstrong, super smooth, puts the three-time champion on the trailer. The next heavy hitter battle, Nico Reed and Mad Mike would dare. Yeah, it's a tough one, Mad Mike. Gonna be have to be on him for this this battle, eh? Oh yeah, game on now, bro. So the number one qualifier, Mad Mike Wood, back behind the wheel of the RX-7. He mentioned before how quick it was. Let's see if young Nico Reed in the S15 can keep up. Now Nico Reed will be out for blood for the number one qualifier, Mad Mike. Big entry there, but a massive handbrake that slows him right down. Nico Reed, back bumper hitting. Yeah, Mad Mike there just showing his experience. A little bit of tactics coming into play there. Nico Reed didn't quite read that one. Mad Mike keeps on sliding through, created a bit of a gap there. Nico Reed's going to be fighting uphill from here. Now we go up to the judges' town. They call a huge advantage to Mad Mike, 7-3. Exactly, so Nico's going to have to pull it out of the bag. But we look at this replay. Mad Mike, huge handbrake to scrub off and pull that angle in. And Nico, nowhere to go. So we swap over Warren, Mad Mike on the chase. Nothing more to do here than sit back, listen to the quad rotor scream as Mikey gives him a lesson in how to chase. That'll be all she wrote. Mad Mike to the top eight. And from Mad Mike, we go to the rerun. Carl Reuterman, Bradley Lauder, two S14s. It's good to uh, battle Carl. I've uh, watched him since I started drifting, eh? and now he's he's pretty bloody good and consistent, so it's pretty cool to go rerun with him. So we were unable to separate these two drivers after their first battle. Two technically supreme guys behind the wheel. Neither of them particularly flair in their style, but they simply don't make mistakes. Lauder now has the chase. Newfound power this season, 450 odd kilowatts. Carl Rodman dialed that car back since it's come back from China down to about 320. Also trying to find his way on the new GT radial tyre. 
That's right, Warren. Both of these drivers have an abundance of ability. Both need a bit more creativity to the judges' words. But on this occasion, Carl Reutemann will get the advantage. So we'll just take a look at a quick replay there. You can see Carl Reutemann nice and close to the rear of Bradley Lauder's WAL Engineering S14. No mistakes being made. Reutemann switches over and takes the lead. And right from the start, Brad Lauder nowhere to be seen. The possibility all but gone for the top eight for him. But Carl Reutemann will go through. But um, we're working through it. We've got an ignition problem, so we're about half down on power. But um, hey, I'm definitely not concerned, man. The 1300 will definitely be sussing, that's for sure. Chris Trundle quietly confident they're up against one of the real standouts so far here at Manfield. Fanger Dan, the Castro Edge Commodore. Trundle, though, was good in qualifying, had plenty of angle, just doesn't have the power to stick with Castro or Fanger Dan. Chris Trundle diving back in on that last hairpin, doing a good job in the Series 4 RX7. So it's going to be an advantage to Fanger Dan as they swap over. Now, will Chris Trundle be able to recover the advantage that Fanger Dan holds? It's all about a technical game when the advantage is on the chase car. So, Chris, he's going to be trying to force a mistake, Warren. You can see the smile on Fanger Dan's face. He's so relaxed in car. When he's like this, he's just about unbeatable. Chris Trundle doing what he can, but Fanger Dan all over the back of the S4 RX7. And ah, oh, Chris Trundle pushes him wide. That's going to shatter him. There go his hopes for round one. A couple of victory burnouts for a consolation. Fanger Dan goes through to top eight. As we see two of the more unique cars in the field, 20B Methanol Power up against the V8 Twin Turbo of Matt Quatt from the Hawks Bay. So a completely new car from Danum Temperman in the NAC RX7 versus the rebuilt Matt Quatt Milwaukee S13. Look at the angle that Danum Templeman stacks on. Now that allows Matt Quatt to catch him up, but will he be able to replicate? Yeah, Quatt about to dive in here. Oh, he's made a mistake. Matt Quatt, two wheels off the inside. That will be a 10-0 to Danum Templeman. Not the start that Matt Quatt wants to his championship fight, but we swap over. Let's have a look at this replay where it all went wrong for the Milwaukee S13. Yeah, you can see Matt Quatt accelerating hard. The car just rotated past the point of being able to hold on. Two wheels off on the inside. Instant zero for Quatt. Unfortunately, another dirt drop there as they swap over for the Milwaukee S13. Yeah, the Milwaukee team been fighting mechanical gremlins all weekend, and here he goes again. Matt Quatt straight ahead. That steering rack is just not right. Danum Templeman makes his way into the top eight. Now two heavyweights of the championship, Kurt Whitaker on the left in the R34 Skyline, the defending champion versus Andrew Redwood in the redeveloped, the new fresh V8 RX7. Now the judges wanted him to hold out wide on the sweeper and he delivers it. The judges from Kurt Whitaker on the chase want a big angle. So both drivers listening to the judges by Andrew Redwood, huge gap. Yeah, Andrew Redwood is renowned for dialing maximum angle into the FC Achilles Radial RX7. Doing what he can here to try and get an advantage over the defending DK, but he chucks it all away. Four wheels off in the grass, massive advantage to Kurt Whitaker. Now this really affects the championship race for Kurt Whitaker, puts him off to a, a very big high. So we swap over, Andrew Redwood just too much power, now they slide back in. Kurt Whitaker with a big lead, Andrew Redwood though chasing down that skyline. You see there, Kurt Whitaker just mashing the throttle, trying to make as much smoke as possible, make it as difficult for Andrew Redwood to see as he can. Redwood tucks right up on the rear, but he corrects himself. And that sly mistake from Redwood's going to push Kurt Whitaker through. Top eight it is. Two of the relative newcomers are up next. Sky's our Bruce Tannock. Our car runs an LS1 V8 motor. 5.7 makes about 300 kilowatts on wheels. So if you are a V8 fan, make sure you follow us. So Bruce Tanner coming in third position for qualifying. Now the judges made a note that he wasn't hitting that outside clip on entry, but with battles, I guess you chuck that all out. Now Sky Zell, very short car, first competition debut in the two degrees 350. You can see just how much forward momentum though Bruce Tannock has off those Achilles 123S drift tyres. Tannock able to mash the throttle the whole way around the track, hits the inside clip, drifts onto the outside, he's got the advantage. Now one thing the judges also said about Sky Zell is he stacks on way too much angle and it scrubs heaps of his speed. Now this is going to be great for Bruce Tanner if he can use it to his advantage. And a big mistake there coming from Bruce Tannock, just getting lost in Sky Zell's smoke. Tannock straightens up. That's going to hand the advantage back to Sky Zell. That's right, so both drivers making a lot of corrections in the run, but Sky Zell overall will prevail. Top 8. 
go to a replay here of the last corner. You can see Bruce Tennant with another correction. That's the second one for the run. Zhao through. Um, I had a pretty big motocross crash and overshot a jump by a bit and broke both my ankles. So by day he's a school teacher from Hamilton. Oh. By night he's a crash test dummy for motocross tracks. Kyle Jackways returns to the driver's seat this season after being one of our D1NZ judges for the past two years. I'm stoked to be back in the seat, to be doing anything. I've spent the last five months sitting in a wheelchair with two broken legs. So yeah, nice to be back in a car and to get back in the top 16, first time out in a brand new car. I'm stoked. As I said, the Nexon tyres 180 of Kyle Jackway's a new car versus this young man, the NAC Insurance Scholarship winner, Ben Belcher. What a surprise. Yeah, Belcher's here on debut, qualified number six. One wheel off, though. That's going to be a deduction. And Kyle Jackway's way offline here, so the judges saying needs to go up a gear and hunt for those clips. Another small correction from Kyle, and the judges score that a dead even run. So it's going to come down to the chase now of Ben Belcher, Warren. So neither driver will be happy with that run. Jackways has the lead this time. He's got to make more smoke off those Nexon tyres. You can see there Ben Belcher just has perfectly clear vision. He's tucked right up onto the back of the Nexon DTM 180SX. Ben Belcher looking pretty good here, Brendan. That's right, a nice aggressive switch there from Kyle Jackways, but it's not going to be enough right now. Ben Belcher has the advantage. All he's got to do is come through this last corner. Shallow angle coming out. Shallow angle from Belcher. Judge is called Ben Belcher. When we come back after the break, it's the Development Series highlights in the top four. Welcome back to the Cody's D1NZ National Drifting Championship. So Warren, it's the Pro-Am Series. Now the Pro-Am Series feeds the, the Pro Series in New Zealand. Give me a bit more info on that though. Yeah, so the Development Series was formed by D1NZ when there was a gap identified in the market. These guys need a place to get on the track, they need a place to learn for most. It's a competition debut. The focus is not on power, it's not on how much money you spend, the focus is really on learning to drive. And another really cool thing about this uh, feeder series, Warren, is the D1NZ Pro Drivers get out there and they mentor the up-and-coming drivers. So if you've got a car and you want to get into a motorsport, now this is a real easy, basic way to have a go at competitive motorsport. You can be out on track for about $10,000 and this year we've got record numbers of entrants in the development series getting better and better as the rounds go on. For more information just get onto our website d1nz.com or Facebook D1NZ official get out in there. So we're going to jump into the top four now the highlights of the top four pro-ams it was Sam Smith versus Vincent Langhorn. Interesting story with Sam Smith ex-road racing motorcycle racer who's uh, brought a new flavour to D1NZ Pro and this year Vince Langhorn one of the more experienced Development Series drivers has made his way through the top four on a number of occasions. You can see here showing a clean pair of heels to Sam Smith. Vincent Langhorn's going to have the advantage after the first battle. So like the pro field, they swap over now a lot of nerves coming from these young drivers. The first time they've been out in front of 5,000 people drifting, let alone competitively drifting. A lot of the pro drivers will tell you you have to drive by feel when you get into that smoke. You can't see where you're going. you really got to rely on subtle hints like brake lights and just the body language of the car in front of you. Sam Smith doing a good job. Mistake from Vince Langhorn. Sam Smith will be the winner. So Sam Smith for his first competition debut picks up their position for the Pro-Am Feeder Series. It's now Matt Lauder versus Russell Sifleek for the battle of first and second. Feeling pumped. Can't wait to go out there, shred some tyres and stick it close to Matt and uh, see how we go. It's awesome. So stoked. Um, my goal was to just be able to drive today to get top eight. Now I'm in the final. It's awesome, man. Just excited for the rest of the season. It's a great way to start. So Matt Lauder did more than just drive. He grabbed the number one qualifying spot. He's been the form driver all day. And a big mistake there from Russell Sifleet. Matt Lauder getting the advantage. And Matt Lauder, Wellington Local, the same as our Round Cup sponsor here, Finman Software Solutions. Get onto their website, finmansoftware.co.nz, give them an email, and you could win a luxury weekend away in Wellington. So the advantage there goes to Matt Lauder as the crowd are up on their feet. They're waiting to see who's going to be crowned our first Development Series Champion of the Year. It's an important way to start off your campaign, Brendan. Yeah, I must admit that's a really impressive entry for the Pro-Ams coming into the sweeper, much like the D1NZ Pro Field. So Matt and Russell definitely earning their spot for the battle for first and second. But Matt pushes wide. That's going to be huge for him. But it's a 10-0 advantage to Matt at the moment. He's going to dive back on up. It's got to be enough, the judges will call it, and Matt Lauder gets the win for round one, Mighty Manfield. The mistake didn't matter, the advantage was there, the win to Matt Lauder. 
So we go straight to the top eight, the high energy battle. Man, Mike, Cole Armstrong, Danum Templeman versus Kurt Whitaker. Carl Ruderman versus Fingered in and Sky Zow and Ben Belcher. The first battle on the top eight, though, the battle of the energy drinks. Well, it's pretty busy. I didn't even know if we were going to make this weekend. The last three weeks have been from Japan to USA for the Formula D finals up there. Then just pretty much flew back to New Zealand, packed, repacked my bags, fresh kit of Etnies, and then been in Jordan for the last week for uh, Red Bull Car Park Drift World Finals. Hell of a life you lead, Mikey, but you're up against one of the real characters of New Zealand drifting. So the business in the top eight, it's Mad Mike Wendell versus Cole Armstrong. And the notes from the judges is that both drivers have been sacrificing big angle and big line to get an awesome chase. So they're going to be watching and marking that heavily down, but a big mistake from Cole Armstrong. You never want to hand the advantage to Mad Mike Witter because if there's one man in the field who's going to hammer this home, it's Mad Mike Witter in the RX-7. So Cole Armstrong dives back on in the RX-7, sacrifices the angle for the chase, and it's going to be advantage to Mad Mike Witter. So we go to a replay here as they come in hot and fast into that second switch. You see there a mistake from Cole Armstrong, he goes straight ahead. So Mad Mike bumper to bumper with the V-Energy R34. He's out for blood, where's he gone? He's tucked right into the back of the V-Energy R34. Mad Mike with it, he's putting on a clinic this weekend. This is how you chase, this is how you get close proximity. This is what you gotta do to get to the top of the field. He hammers a loud pedal down on the last corner. What a chase by Mad Mike with it, it's gonna be enough. He goes through to top four. Check out this replay, I man. Well, what do you say, Mad Mike Woodett? Has anyone got as close as this man has all weekend? As we head back to the grid, the excitement continues to build here at Manfield in the mighty Manawa 2. So the next top eight battle, Danum Templeman versus Kurt Whitaker. Kurt Whitaker down on power and Danum Templeman 534 kilowatts, nearly 800 horsepower. It's going to be a technical tight one here, but Kurt Whitaker bumper to bumper. Danum Templeman doing what he can to try and run away, got to use that horsepower advantage, but Kurt Whitaker is absolutely on form. His sights are set squarely on the rear quarter of Danum Templeman's car. Now if Danum had just scrubbed off a bit of angle, he would have been able to pull away, but had huge angle through the midsection, and that allowed Kurt Whitaker to get that advantage. So it's a 6-4 as we swap on over. Danum Templeman now on the chase. So Danum Templeman will have had comms from his crew. He knows that Kurt Whitaker's got the advantage. He's got to do what he can. Slowing down a little bit through here. Danum Templeman right up onto the rear and he's been gapped. There's been a gap created. What's that going to mean? Kurt Whitaker now has the advantage. So Danum's going to try to scrub a bit of line to get back in there. He closes a gap, but it's going to push him wide. That's going to cause Kurt Whitaker to go through to top four. So we go to the BP Ultimate replay and we see here Kurt Whitaker goes wide, slows it down, Danum Templeman just too much speed and loses that gap. So now we go to a battle of the 06 DK versus the 07 Carl Reutemann returning to New Zealand competition. He's got his work cut out for him. Fanger Dan has been on fire all day. That's right, I would not want to be Carl Rudiman right now. Fingers out for a win. He wants a win. He said that earlier on. But Carl Rudiman doing an exceptional chase here. Dives on in. He's keeping safe distance. And just in case Fanger makes a mistake, he's going to close it on up through the midsection. Oh, but a slight mistake there from Rudiman. Yeah, Carl Rudiman just showing perhaps a little bit of rustiness. It's been about six months since he's even seen this car before this round. So uh, doing a pretty good job, I think, Rudiman back in the seat. So the judges score an advantage to Fanger Dan as they swap over the first round. This round, the BP Ultimate Triple Crown. Next round will be Tauranga and the third one in Christchurch. Make sure you guys check that out. Look at the dedication on Fanger's face. Fanger Dan Woolhouse is having fun on track. When he's having fun, he's so, so dangerous. Look at how he's tucked onto the back of Carl Ruderman there. Carl Ruderman might be technically brilliant. Fanger Dan's the exact opposite, the original D1 NZ wild child. Now you see these driving in a straight line in Super Tourist, but Fanger Dan peddling the big car to go through to top four. So one of the emerging stars of drifting in New Zealand, Ben Belcher, he's arrived with a bang up against Sky Zhao, the Chinese drift prince. Sky Zhao, very excited to get out there in the 350Z. The competition debut so far so good for him and he's already got a big gap on Ben Belcher in the Green Brothers RX-7. And no matter what the outcome of this battle is, this will be the best result as shrapnel flies and hits Ben Belcher's car. It's now Dodgem's warrant as well as drifting. So what I started to say there, Brendan, was no matter what happens, this will be the best result for either driver in D1NZ Pro competition. So this is an amazing battle, V8 in the lead, Rotary in the rear, 
So Ben Belcher scores the advantage over the two degrees at 570Z there. V8 screaming out. This is where it all went wrong for Skies out. Dropped the wheel over the inside of the curb, ripped the side skirt off, which actually hits Ben Belcher's car. Did pretty well just to keep on drifting, but the young man seemed unfazed. So Skies out holding his own in the second pass. Judges caller dead even split, so it's a rerun. So here we go again with Sky Zell on the 2 degrees 570Z. He has the lead over Ben Belcher. Ben Belcher has been rated all day as the best coming into that first corner by the judges. What an initiation by Ben Belcher, but a slight correction there coming through that corner. The judges want to see consistent, strong angle with no slight corrections in the car. As we take a look at this beautiful aerial footage, you'll see as they go around the last corner, Zell drifts wide. It costs him a lot of speed. Ben Belcher right into the rear bumper there. It's going to hand the advantage to Belcher. So Sky Zell is going to be trying to extract every ounce of speed out of the 2 degrees 570Z to keep up with Belcher and make this happen. Yeah, ben Belcher, 300 kilowatts of Green Brothers rotary engineering underneath the bonnet. Look at him sweeping through that section. Second corner, third corner, Sky Zell with a correction. It's going to be all Ben Belcher. Ben Belcher is headed to the top four in his first ever competition event. So you can see here where it all went wrong for Sky Zell, a slight correction in the middle of the section and then dropping angle on the last apex. That handed it, Ben Belcher goes through, we'll be back after the break for the top four. Welcome back to the Cody's D1NZ Drifting Championship. It's time to find out who's the podium for round one. The top four, Ben Belcher versus Kurt Whitaker and Fangered and Woolhouse versus Mad Mike Wadette. And here we go, it's the new boy on the block versus the defending DK. We've had a bit of a hard weekend, the car's not, not, not playing the game slot, you know, quite, but um, hey, it is what it is and we'll just have to, um, you know, work with what we got. It's, um, we're just going to have to drive it a little bit harder. So hey, it's good to be at the pointy end, it helps with the points. We'll get the car 100%, you know, and then I think, you know, we'll be, we'll be a, lot, a lot better off with round two. You can't just um, go out there and be the best and expect to win, you've got to, um, you know, you've got to make your own luck and, and make everyone else uh, make their own mistakes. First ever D1, I just wanted to make top 16 and oh, fresh, spent like the last two weeks going hard, fresh rebuild from Green Brothers, had it on the dyno, dyno power for like three days trying to find problems and Oh, we made it, man. Isn't that great, Brendan, for the sport? How someone from a motocross background can come and we know Kurt Whitaker's a former karting champ. The championship is on. This is the title fight. There's six rounds across New Zealand. This one's round one, and all these points count for these drivers. Kurt Whitaker goes wide, but Ben Belcher sacrifices his angle, manages to catch it back up. Yeah, Kurt Whitaker's clearly fighting that car. You can see. Oh, Ben Belcher, though, chucks it too deep. And that will score him a zero, a 10 0 advantage to Kurt Whitaker. So you go off the track, people, and zero points to you. What a terrible mistake there for Ben Belcher. He had the advantage till then. You could see Kurt Whitaker was offline. Ben Belcher was looking oh so good. Just got a little wide, got a little messy. Advantage Whitaker. So he's going to be pushing as hard as he can to try to catch back up the defending champion, but look at that gap already from the Whitaker Motorsport R34. Yeah, Kurt Whitaker just absolutely hammered the throttle right from the cones at the start of the section. He's created a gap, he's created some distance, he's trying to push that advantage home. The last corner, he tries to catch him up, sacrifices some angle, it's not going to be enough. Kurt Whitaker through to the final. <laughs> Banger Dan Woolhouse, Mad Mike Woodett, two old foes. Yeah man, so we roll, it's good fun. Who's next? I don't know, line them up. You don't even know. Uh, take them as they come bro. Uh, they're all as competitive as each other, but uh, hopefully it's Banger. Well actually no, next, I'd like to see Banger in the final. Car good? Yeah, car's real good. So some wise words there from Mad Mike and the Red Bull Speed Hunters. RX-7 versus the Castro Edge Holden Commodore. A really big car versus a really small car. The initiation though. Where is Fanger Dan Woolhouse trying to go right through the side of Mad Mike's car? We have not seen a chase that close today. Fanger Dan Woolhouse is extracting everything he can out of the Castro Edge Commodore. Mad Mike able to pull a little bit of a gap there. That's those Nitto tyres, super sticky. What a car to push as well. It's big and it's heavy. And right now the judges score a huge advantage to Fanger Dan. What is Mad Mike going to be able to pull out of the bag? As we go to the replay, check this out from Fanger Dan Woolhouse. We have not seen anything like that all day. So we go to the initiation, Mad Mike, B 
big clutch Gekin. He's going for the chase. Has he gone too wide though? No. Switches back on and right on the catch. Oh, ah! And that's exactly what the judges were looking for. The big dive from Mad Mike. He was told not to do it. He had to stay wide. He sacrificed his angle. He's dove up the inside of Fangadan Woolhouse and he's done it again. He slides on in there though, but what a chase. You've got to give it to Mad Mike. He still delivers it. And the judges' tower deliberating. Took them a long time to work this out, but they call a rerun after that. Yeah, we want more. Was there a touch in there, Banger? Oh, no, nah, not quite, man. I was just, yeah, I was just playing around, eh? Hey? It was pretty cool, eh? Hey? I was just, yeah. How much closer me. can you get? Oh, not much closer than that, eh? Hey? So Fanger down, he's got the juices, Mad Mike's got the Red Bull, who's going to take it out? Cash, oh, he's come on, holy crap, once again, bumper to bumper. What more could you ask for in the first round of the D1 International Drifting Championship? Two of the real icons of the sport going toe to toe, trading punches, lefts and right, switching, trying to get as close as possible to each other. Fanger down, Mad Mike putting on an absolute show for the crowd here at Manfield. So who do you guys at home call the advantage to? Well, as you can see here, it's Mad Mike with a slight advantage. 6-4 to Mad Mike. We swap over now. What a fight, Mad Mike bumper to bumper as they come down the front straight. Initiation first, though, by Castro Edge holding Commodore Fangadan. Fangadan, just another day at the office for the man from Whangarei. There we see it again, the big dive from Mad Mike. He's so close to the rear, but that angle is just not what it needs to be. Fangadan Woolhouse, meantime, is focused on what he needs to do. Look at Mikey putting all sorts of pressure on him, but again, he's up the inside. Fangadan Woolhouse knows he has some work to do. Has he done enough to take it out? Well, the Red Bull Speed Hunters RX-7, one of the best chasers in the world. But Mad Mike, we did, it's not enough. Fangadan Woolhouse goes through to the final. I had no choice, was just to get in there and just do the job, eh? Like, yeah, like between me and Mikey, eh? It's a bit of, it's Rubbin's racing and, um, you know, we have our good days and bad days and, um, so close, man. Yeah, that was good, that was close. Thing got the win, I understand coming in. Things just got no front grip. So Mad Mike's tyres are gone to pieces. It's the baddie, the one, the fatty baddie on steroids versus the young gun who looks up to Mad Mike, Ben Belcher. Watch out for Mad Mike's front in this battle. He comes in, big initiation. Yeah, we go on board here with Mad Mike. We watch the master at the wheel. As much smoke as possible coming off those Nitto NT05 tyres. Much wider line that time from Whittock. You can see just how far those tyres have gone away. So this is a battle for third and fourth position as Mad Mike slides on through and gets the advantage on the lead. Ben Belcher just doesn't have that power. So at this time of the day, it's all about championship points. Mad Mike, an absolute animal behind the wheel. Look at the lesson he's handing out to young Ben Belcher. So close. That's right. So Ben Belcher stacks on the angle coming through there. That's a big mistake when you've got Mad Mike on your back bumper coming in. Championship points. Mike came second last season and he wants that cup in his hand. But what a chase to end the day as Mad Mike puts his hand up to say, I'm a title contender. <laughs> Cody's D1NZ round one, this is the final, this is what you're here for. Yeah, it's anyone's game and everyone's just so, everyone's consistent. He's probably going to be a lot more, you know, amped up in the seat, but uh, you've got to be on his door. It's the only way. So words of wisdom there from the defending DK, but Fangadan Woolhouse is so hungry, he looks a man on a mission, he wants that title this year. Kurt Whitaker wants it as well, he's chasing hard, 65 cars, but what a mistake, Kurt Whitaker goes wide, too wide, and he's now on the grass, that pushes him out, that's a 10-0 to Fangadan, what a way to finish the day, Fangadan's going to slide on through, whether he knows it or not, is going to be the question. Well, Fanger Dan won't have anything in his mind other than let's just go out and lay the perfect run. You can't control what the other driver's doing. He's just going to go and drive as hard as he possibly can. He won't know that Kurt Whitaker has made a mistake. He doesn't have radio comms. Kurt Whitaker has got to do everything in his power now to try and force a transfer. Here we go, the big initiation. Kurt Whitaker on the lead. The Castro Edge coming on the chase. What a chase it is. Fangadan is coming in hard and fast. Well, was there contact there? Fangadan looks like his car is damaged. Are his round hopes dashed? He's off off the track. That will be a 10-0 to Kurt Whitaker, which makes it even. It's a 10-0 first to Fangadan because Kurt Whitaker came off and now Fangadan has come off. So he scores a zero as well. It's a clean slate, which means it will be a rerun.
Right, and you can see from the shot there is clearly damage to the front of the Castrol Edge Commodore. So what's going to happen now? Fangadan and his team have five minutes, just five minutes, to fix that car. So we look here at the replay. What's happened here, Warren? Well, it looks like Fangadan's coming hard on full lock. He's made contact with the rear of Kurt Whitaker's car, and it's broken the front hub. And there you see it. That's where the damage is done. Can Fanga make it back out? I didn't feel anything. He was bloody close. I know that. And he got in. I think he obviously got in there a little bit too close and uh, couldn't couldn't hold his line. And uh, hey, it, it's all. It's how it is. It's um. <laughs> it was bloody close. And I seen him right in there. I made a mistake on my run. Yeah. I just couldn't see where I was going and uh, and switched too early and, and ended up getting across the grass. Whether or not I got two wheels on or not, I'm not too sure. But hey, that's what it's all about. Um, Oh, I see he's done a bit of damage, I've given him five minutes before I line up, so um, he's got another five minutes, so if he can fix it within ten minutes, then it'll be a fair battle. Hey, we haven't come here to win by DNF, that's for sure. There's no point in winning if uh, there's no, uh, no, no opponent. There's just not enough time, Clerk. Of course, Dan Teaboon calls time on repairs. Yeah, I don't know why we we sort of we come into the corner and we in the corner and then we just it's all go and then it's like we just stopped, you know? And I was just like boom and then next time I'm like out and I'm just like what the f you know? I don't think I hit him, I, I braked out of it. I th I think I braked and then hit the wheel because like it was just And you can see the emotion on Fanger Dan's face, he will not win today. So as we go to prize giving for the D1NZ Development Series, home in third place it was Sam Smith, second place Russell Sifley, and in first place Mr Matt Lauder. Ladies and gentlemen, brought to you by Cody's BP Ultimate Dodson Performance Castrol Edge and Finman Software Solutions. Home in third position for Red Bull, it's the mad one, Mr. Mad Mike Wittitz. So Mikey looking strong as always, number one qualifier points, third place points. That's going to be a good start to his championship season. Home in second place and it's Fanger Dan Woolhouse. Clearly disappointed with the way things finished. Fingered in Woolhouse for Castro Edge. Nothing but pure anger from that man. That your winner, the defending DK, sponsored by the Mount Shop and Alf Wills Whitaker Motorsport, it is Mr. Kurt Whitaker! So Kurt Whitaker, the defending DK, gets his campaign off to a great start. He will take maximum points, 100 in the bank. As we go to our championship leaderboard, Kurt Whitaker sits atop, followed by Daniel Woolhouse, Mad Mike Whittett, Ben Belcher, and Danum Templeman. Well, what a round it's been here at round one of the Cody's D1NZ National Drifting Championship. Celebrations are underway. Kurt Whitaker, the defending title championship holder, took it out with Mad Mike Whittett in third and fingered in Woolhouse in second. We'll catch you at round two, Whangarei, on the 1st and 2nd of December. And let's check out some of the smoke action from Cody's D1NZ. D1NZ brought to you by Cody's Bourbon and Cola, Castro Edge Oil, BP Ultimate and Dodson Performance.